Hello everyone, Harry Baldock here, editor at Total Telecom. I'm delighted today to be joined by the Senior Director of Market Development at Interaction, a digital realty company, Mike Hollands, to catch up with all the latest trends in the submarine cable industry and how these are impacting the data center market. Uh, Mike, it's great to speak to you today. Thanks for joining me. Harry, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. You're very welcome. Uh, to start us off, can you give us some recent examples of uh, subsea cable projects connected to interaction data centers and kind of outline how this helps projects achieve their success? Sure, well, perhaps uh, two of the biggest uh, examples I can give you uh, were cables uh, such as CMUE5 and AAE1, which you know, originate in uh, Hong Kong and Singapore and, and, and make their way uh, across the globe to uh, Marseille in, in southern France. Um, both of these really got going in 2017. And um, if, if we look at uh, the, the last five years, we, we've seen both systems be uh, a tremendous success. Uh, thanks in part to the fact that they interconnect at the interaction data center in Marseille. We see uh, the success as a data center operator in terms of the number of cross connects, and these are measured in hundreds for each system that uh, interconnect with the systems in our data centers. Uh, and of course, uh, the number of networks, content providers, cloud platforms, edge nodes that materialize in our data centers. And uh, you know, one of the prime reasons is to interconnect with systems such as CMUE5 and AAE1. But the wider market um, can see the success of the systems by the regular announcements they both made for capacity upgrades. Uh, because you know, the, 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 the commercial success of the projects is, is driven by the number of orders uh, they get. And this is one of the, the things that we, as a data center operator, uh, can really help with the success of the commercial side of the, the systems um, uh, project. In terms of new subsidy projects, can we expect them to follow a similar approach in future? Well, well actually, um, Harry, there, there are um, two systems which uh, have just recently uh, made announcements uh, about their, um, about going live that uh, um, are following similar approaches and perhaps may surprise some people in that uh, unlike Marseille, which is a, a city by the coast, um, they, these are projects which are leveraging data centers that are hundreds of kilometers away from the coast. So one example of this is Ellerlink. You know, uh, this system originates uh, in my country of birth, Brazil, uh, and comes uh, across uh, the Atlantic to uh, Cines in Portugal. Now, uh, Interaction has a data center 100 kilometers away in Spain, in Madrid. Uh, and if you visit the Ellerlink website, uh, you will see that uh, they have taken great care to ensure that when they launch their project, they have an integrated terrestrial and subsea network that allows their customers to interconnect with their cable at multiple points, whether it's Cines, Lisbon, or in the case of interaction in Madrid. And of course, in Madrid, again, like in Marseille, where we have hundreds of networks and, and content providers, the same applies in Madrid. It's a real interconnection hub for the Iberian Peninsula. So Ellerlink is a, 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 another example. Um, another recent one is uh, the Dunant cable that uh, came from you know, uh, West Virginia across the Atlantic and landed on the west coast of France at uh, saint hilaire de Riz. Um, if you look at how Telsius, who own one fiber pair on that system, have constructed their network, um, again, they have extended their system from saint hilaire de Riz on the west coast of France, all the way to Paris. Again, a diverse terrestrial network ensuring that they have resilience, but by bringing their network to Paris, uh, they're able to interconnect 
with the vast number of networks and content providers efficiently and effectively. Um, when it's in interactions data centers or within our group of data centers, obviously that an interconnection is very easy, ordered by our portal. But so uh, is it easy to interconnect with many of the data centers located in Paris that are nearby? So uh, th these are, you know, um, more recent examples of cables that exploit uh, interaction data centers. Up and coming very shortly, uh, I, I would like to point out two other systems. Uh, we have the Cross Lake Channel cable. Uh, being built by Cross Lake Fiber, which will go live at the at the end of this year, and you know they really have uh, ensured that from the UK all the way to Paris, uh, there is new fiber in place to ensure that their customers get the the top quality uh, services. So when they're building their systems, they're not just thinking about the subsea element; they're really thinking about how they get to key interconnection points such as inter interactions data center in Paris and Eastern Light are another example uh, in uh, the Nordics from Helsinki to Scott uh, to, to um, Stockholm and they really again um, the subsea part is very much one element of it the terrestrial part they really work hard to ensure that their fiber is following diverse routes diverse entry points into data centers. They, they think about their project end to end. And uh, again, this is to, to leverage uh, the ability to interconnect with their key customers in interaction data centers. You've mentioned this a few times, but I wanted to speak to you a bit about Marseille, which is of course already a really significant subsea cable hub and somewhere where interaction is providing services to, to multiple cable systems. What does the future look like for Marseille in terms of submarine connectivity? Well, first of all, there's more cables coming. And these, these new cables have much more uh, capacity, many more fiber pairs on them. Um, already recently announced are cables such as Peace, which uh, will go live at the end of 2021, um, connecting you know, China through Pakistan uh, and on to Marseille. Um, so that's one massive new cable that will be live in 21. We have Two Africa that has a, a, a announced, you know, its deployments in, in the Mediterranean, which include Marseille. And very recently, uh, capacity covered the announcement from um, Blue Ramen, the, the new cable that to, uh, will also come into the Mediterranean and include a stop in Marseille. So those are just three of, of uh, a longer list I, I, I could discuss with you. But so first of all, Marseille will continue to get additional cables. H however, um, other things are happening in Marseille. Uh, the role the city plays is changing uh, from being an, an interconnection hub where you know, networks uh, exchange traffic with one another you know, we have 170 networks present in Marseille uh, at the moment. Um, it's going to build on that and, and become what, what we see as a content hub. So we're seeing cloud players now deploy multi-megawatt deployments in Marseille. So it, it's not just a, a network in a traffic exchange point uh, anymore but actually a location where content is aggregated, created, and then utilizes the interconnectivity that's present in the city to uh, get around the world. Um, the other dimension that Marseille is changing is um, that it's integrating in a deeper way with other cities in the Mediterranean. So we're, for diversity reasons, we're seeing that as well as leveraging Marseille, subsea cables are, are looking to find new routes um, into, you know, out of the Mediterranean and into Europe. Uh, so we're going to see uh, Marseille integrate in a complementary way with cities such as uh, Barcelona, uh, Genoa, uh, and Athens. Looking to the future, then, 
where do you think is the next location that interaction can bring value to these subsea cable projects that are coming in? Yeah, well, well first I should mention, and I forgot to mention, that we will continue to add value in Marseille. Uh, we, we have built our third data center in Marseille since we were uh, last at Subsea World event in, uh, in London. And uh, we have a fourth data center that will be uh, going live in June 2022. Uh, and there's a long-term roadmap for Marseille. So we will continue adding, adding value there. In terms of other cities, as to the question you asked, um, well, first of all, we, we're going to be adding value to subsea cables in Africa. So we, we already have a business uh, in, um, in Kenya, uh, Icolo, and our data centers in, in Mombasa are going to be the, 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 the location that, we, that adds value to cables such as Peace and to Africa that we've mentioned before and, and, and extend to that part of the world as well. And there's other countries in, in Africa that uh, we will be um, implementing similar projects that we, we put into uh, Mombasa. Uh, and, and many of these locations are specifically driven by subsea cable project requirements. One location closer to home that uh, we, we, we see ourselves uh, developing uh, further is, you know, is Greece. Uh, we, we made an acquisition of uh, Lambda Helix um, last year, and uh, we, we see uh, Greece playing an increasingly important location uh, in, the, in, in, in its role with subsea cables. Um, Eastern Europe is, is growing very fast, and there is a, there is a desire for a, a, a sort of increased highway uh, coming from the Mediterranean through Greece uh, that can act as a hub for, for Turkey and uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, and therefore that's a, a, a location over the coming years that uh, we feel we can add increasing value for the subsea cable community. It's clearly a really fascinating time for uh, the subsea industry all around the world. And Mike, it's been really great speaking to you. Thank you very much for your time today. Well, Harry, thanks again for, for having me. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. If you want to hear more from Mike and Interaction, he'll be giving an update on the business during day one of the upcoming Submarine Networks EMEA conference held in London at the start of next month. His colleague, Luigi San Giorgio, Operations Director for Italy is also joining a panel on the 3rd of September discussing the evolution of the relationship between the data centre and subsea industries. For more information about these sessions in the upcoming Submarine Networks EMEA event, please visit our website and book your place today.